Hi, I'm Charity from Ralubimba Secondary School. Uh, I'm Gwadulore Fona from Ralubimba Secondary School. And here we need assistance to this question number 2, 2.1 to 2.5. I will appreciate if, if you help me. Uh, uh, this one. Right. Um, it says to us here, M is the center of the circle which passes through point A with coordinates minus 6 and minus 2, B with coordinates 0 and 6, and D. Right. Now, BC is a tangent to the circle at B. Okay, fine. Now, remember, it is important for you to read the love letter. After reading the love letter, update your diagram so that you'll have all the key information that might help you to solve the problems that you're going to enter, uh, to, to meet with in this question. So the coordinates of A, A were apparently given to us as minus 6 and minus 2. So I'm going to write them there next to A. And the coordinates of B were given to us as 0 as well as 6. And there's a point D with no coordinates. We can clearly see what D is right there. And we are told that BC is also a tangent. So this information might help us later to find any solution to any question that we might be asked. So let's check our first question on this particular awesome, nice analytical geometry question. It says to us that we need to state the coordinates of point M. Right. Now, if you look at the positioning of point M, M is the center of this beautiful circle that you guys are looking at. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that if point A is on the circumference of the circle and point B is on the circumference, that makes A be the diameter. And then if that is the case, then point M will simply be the midpoint of that point A and that point B. So for us to figure out what the coordinates of A, M are going to be, and the, the x and the y coordinate of m are going to be, we just need to figure out the midpoint of point A and point B. So the formula for the midpoint says to us the midpoint is x of A plus x of B divided by 2, and then y of A plus y of B divided by 2. This is very simple, guys. You know this. Okay, cool. So now the x coordinate is simply going to be minus 6 added to 0 divided by 2, and it's going to be minus 2 plus 6 divided by 2, and then it eventually amounts to the coordinates of m being negative 6 plus 0, which is negative, uh, negative 6 over 2, which is going to give us negative 3, and then 6 minus 2 is 4 over 2, which is going to simply give us a value of 2. So the coordinates of m are simply minus 3 as well as 2. Very nice and easy question. All right, let's move on to the second part of this. The second part says to us here, we need to determine the equation of the circle, right? Now, this is actually the key word. You need to read the key word here, guys. The key word is equation of a circle. Now, what do we know about the equation of a circle? Well, we know for a fact that the equation of a circle must take the form x minus something squared plus y minus something else squared is equal to the radius of the circle squared. Now, the important thing you need to keep in mind is that the value of A and the value of B are simply coordinates of the center of this particular circle. Now, if you look closely at the circle that we're dealing with, we already know that this point M, which is the center of the circle, is simply negative 3 is equal to uh, the x coordinate and then 2 will be your y coordinate at the center. So we simply have our a value and we also have our b value. Now the next thing we also need to worry about is the radius of the circle. There's many ways of finding the radius. Of course, if you've got the coordinates of m and the coordinates of b, you can work out the length of mb, which will be your radius in this case. So there's many ways of looking at that one, and I'm going to use a different uh, set of uh, methods to help you guys to understand how can you really find a solution to this particular question. So now let's begin and put the information here. So the formula we're going to begin with is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. You can't miss this one, guys, because they told you equation of the circle. The equation of a circle has that uh, uh, formula. Now, our x is going to be x minus. The value of the x coordinate of your center is a, which is minus 3. So it will amount to plus 3 because negative times negative is positive. And then I'm going to have y minus the y coordinate of the center, which is 2, which I'm going to write here, equals to um, r squared. Now, the problem we have now, the problem we have in this particular question is we don't know what the radius is. So there are two ways we can actually approach the question. One, we can work out the length of the radius because we've got the coordinates of the center 
and the coordinates of either B or the coordinates of A. So you work out MB, which is the radius, or you work out MA, which is also the radius, you've got the equation that you're looking for. Alternatively, you can just take any point on the circumference of the circle, any point. Take the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and substitute them wherever you see X and Y, and then you will be able to see that the only unknown is R, and then you can be able to find what your R is going to be. Right, and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this particular instance. Remember the coordinates of B were given to us, and we were told that the X coordinate is zero when the Y coordinate is six. So I'm gonna steal those ones and use them. What am I gonna use them as? I'm gonna use this one as my X value, and I'm gonna use this one as my Y value on that particular equation we are sitting with because the circle does pass through b that's why i'm going to take those ones as my coordinates so my x value there is simply zero so i've got zero plus three with a square and then i've got six minus two with a square equals to r squared the only thing we don't know in this case is our r so we are going to be able to figure out what the value of r is so zero plus three is three three squared is giving us nine plus um, 6 minus 2, which is 4, 4 squared is going to give us 16, equals to r squared. 9 plus 16 gives us 25. This is the value of r squared. I don't even need to work out what the radius is going to be, which is going to be uh, 5 in this particular instance, because I just need r squared for my formula. We need r squared, remember? The formula works with r squared and not r, so I don't even need to work out what the radius is. Okay, I'm just going to take that r squared as 25 and substitute everything in my equation. Now, my final answer is going to be the equation is going to be x minus of a minus, which is going to be plus 3 squared plus y minus 2, <coughs> excuse me for that, 2 squared is equal to 25. Right, so this is the equation of the circle. Right, the math is so exciting, guys. I'm even coughing. Anyway, uh, the third question, guys, the third question. We now need to find the length of BD, right? Now, if you want to find the length of BD, guys, there's two ways we can do this particular question. I'm going to be sneaky about it and engage our knowledge of Euclidean geometry to find the solution in a very smart way, guys. The other one, I'll leave it up to you so that when you're at home, you can actually do it as practice and see if you're going to get the same answer as the one that I'm going to get. But then I'll share it with you first and then give you a chance to try it on your own when you're at home. But then let's look at it and see what the story is. What do we know so far? Well... We know that the coordinates of B are 0 and 6. We know the coordinates of A are minus 6 and minus 2. We know now that we are supposed to find the coordinates of D. In addition, we are told that this circle has the equation x minus of minus 3, which is plus 3 squared, plus y minus um, 2 squared is equal to 25. Now, this equation you're looking at here, which is the equation of the circle, has got two unknowns. What are those unknowns? We don't know what x is. We also don't know what y is. Now, if you look at point D, which we are actually looking at, because you can't find the length of BD, the question is specifically asking us to find the length of the distance from point B all the way up to from point B all the way up to point D. That is basically what you're looking for. We want to find out how long is this distance, guys. That's what we want to find out, right? We want to find out how long that particular thing is going to simply be from here all the way up until there, right? Now, for us to be able to find it, we definitely need to find the coordinates of D. When we know what the coordinates of D are, we will be able to then claim the solution that we're looking for. So if you look there, we know one of those coordinates because D lies on the y-axis. It is obvious that the x value is going to simply become a zero there. Now, the only thing we need here is what is the y coordinate. When you know what the y coordinate is, then we can be able to tell you what the length of BD is going to be. Now, I can simply do something very easy here, guys. I can take this x value of zero, this x value of zero, and substitute it there on the equation of the circle where we have x. Just put it there where you see x there. You will have 0 plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared is 25. And then the only unknown here will be y. This is going to be the only thing that we don't know. And then you can be able to apply your algebraic skills to solve for y. That is one way you can actually look at the question. Now I'm going to be very sneaky about it and use Euclidean geometry to find the solution. I bet you never thought Euclidean geometry can work in this particular instance. Now, remember the theorem that says if you've got a circle, right, if you've got a nicer circle than the one I have here, and then you've got a line which we call the diameter, if you've got a diameter like that, right, if this is the diameter, the angle that is going to be subtended by a diameter must definitely be 90 degrees. Do you guys remember this theorem? I know you guys remember the theorem. Now, if you look there, we have got the diameter AB so far. And we've got that line BD, which is also another chord in the circle. Now, if I join 
the point A all the way to point D. There's no two ways about it. This angle has to be angle 90 degrees. There's no two ways about it. That angle will have to definitely be 90 degrees. Now, if this line is perpendicular to the y-axis, it means it's parallel to the x-axis. That simply means that whatever the y-coordinate of A is here, the d value will carry the same y-coordinate because any line that is parallel to the x-axis lies on the equation of the line y equals to something. So any point on this yellow line that I have, which is currently a and d, will simply have a y-coordinate of negative 2. So the y-value of d must also come out as negative 2 when you solve for it in that particular question. Very nice way of looking at it and absolutely, absolutely fascinating, guys. I hope you learned something from that. Right, the last question that I'm going to look at is this one that says we need to determine the equation of BC. Now we have to find the equation of the line BC. What were we told so far? Well, we know that this line is simply the tangent of this particular awesome circle that we're dealing with. Now, in geometry, that's why I said to you guys, we are doing Euclidean geometry, analytical geometry, as well as trigonometry. All those three concepts, they come together when you're dealing with analytical geometry of grade uh, 12, where we have to ask you a lot of things that involve those three concepts. So never at all shut your tree off, never shut off your Euclidean geometry, particularly when you're doing these particular circle questions. All right, so now I'm gonna use the fact that a radius and a tangent that are perpendicular to each other. And if I say two lines are perpendicular at the back of your mind, uh, of your mind, it should click immediately that perpendicular lines will give you negative one. The product of the gradients of perpendicular lines will always be negative one. Okay, cool. So let's use that fact and see what the story is going to be. So this has to be 90 degrees because the radius or the diameter will always be perpendicular to uh, the tangent. So the gradient of the radius multiplied by the gradient of the tangent will simply be negative one. Now, if I know that this is basically negative three and two, and I also know that this is zero and six, I can work out the gradient of the radius. So the gradient of the radius is changing y over changing x, so it's simply y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is six minus two, which is four, over zero plus three, which is three. Now, if that is the case, then I'm simply going to say therefore, the gradient of this particular tangent will just simply be negative 3 over 4. It's just the inverse of that one with an opposite sign because a tangent is perpendicular to a radius. That's the reason there. Tangent is perpendicular to the radius, so the product of that gradient will always give you negative 1. Right, now, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm looking for the equation. The equation must take the form y is mx plus c. Now I'm going to engage my knowledge of what this value means. Remember guys, this is also from paper one. c represents the y-intercept of the line and then m represents the gradient of the line. Do I have the gradient of the line? Yes, I just found it. It is negative 3 over 4. Do I have where the line passes on the y-axis? Yes, we do. The line does pass through the point B there. So we don't need to use y minus y1 is m into x minus x1. I can just simply take 6 and substitute it as the value of C, which will give us the solution to what this is going to simply be. So in conclusion, the equation is going to be y equals to negative 3 over 4x plus six, and that will be the solution of this question. Thank you very much for that question, Charity. It's an awesome question that helps us to open up and engage all the other math concepts.